there are multiple types of timers and counters. In addition to the delay on timer, there is a delay off timer. And the way this operates is that when the input is true, the output is also true, and it remains true as long as the input is true. When the input goes to false, elapsed time starts to increase. Once elapsed time is equal to or greater than preset time, then the output becomes false. Here's an example of a delay off timer. We see that it has been 2.184 seconds since the input went from true to false. So the output is still true because the preset time is 8 seconds. Once the elapsed time reaches 8 seconds, then the output is true just like the input. If the input had gone back to true before the 8 seconds had elapsed, then the output would remain true because the elapsed time would have been reset. Another type is a retentive timer. This is an example of a delay on retentive timer. And in this type, elapsed time is not reset whenever the input goes from true to false. The elapsed time is only reset whenever a reset instruction is given or whenever the reset input um, is set to true. And one example of when a retentive timer would be useful is if the hours of operation, well not hours of operation, but the the time that a machine has been in operation is wanted is desired to be recorded. So a, a retentive timer would keep track of that. Whenever the machine is on, the elapsed time would, would increase, and then when the machine goes off, the elapsed time would stop increasing, but it wouldn't go back to zero. And so you could use this to have an indicator light come on once the total number of hours that the machine has been used reach a certain amount. And those hours would would not be reset whenever the machine's not in use. And the final timer that we'll examine is the pulse generation. This keeps the output on for a fixed amount of time. Whenever the input is on, then the output is immediately set to be true, and the timer begins to increase. Elapsed time increases, and once elapsed time equals the preset time, then the output goes off. And that is the operation regardless of what happens with the input. Here are the four timers that we've examined. The delay on timer, delay off timer, delay on retentive timer, and the pulse generation. Now we'll look briefly at counters. Counters are common in industrial applications because actions must often be based on product counts. For example, if we're packing a case, there might be four rows of six cans. And so whenever the number of cans loaded equals six, then the state of the system would change. And whenever we've done four rows of six cans, then the state would change. There are three counters that we'll examine, up counters, down counters, and up-down counters. And in all of these, the count value changes whenever the input changes. So a pulse to the input changes the count value. Counters behave a lot like timers, it's just that the signal is from a different source. So instead of the pulses coming from the clock, the pulse comes from one of the inputs. Whenever a counter is created, there's also a counter data block created. And here are the tags. We'll look at these tags in our examples for the different types of counters. We have a count up instruction or CTU instruction. And here is the input for the up counter to increment the CV tag, which is the count value. And once CV is equal to or greater than PV, the preset value, then the output Q is set to true. So this tag will count up every time this input changes from false to true. And in order to reset this count value, a signal must be given to the reset input. Here's an example of using uh, up counter and its tags. So here we have the input, whenever this input 
goes from false to true 12 times or more, then this output is set to true. This output bit is set to 1. And we have a different bit that acts as a counter reset. And we can use the count value tag and a comparison instruction to this number 6. So the way this operates would be once the input has gone true 6 times, then this output is set to 1. And then on the 7th time, the output would be set back to 0. And once the input has gone true 12 times, then this output is set to 1. And it stays 1 until we reset the counter. A countdown instruction is very similar except that a, a pulse to the input decrements the counter. And it might seem logical for the output of a countdown counter to become true whenever the count value reaches zero, but the way it operates is, at least in Siemens PLCs, is that the output is true when the count value is equal to or greater than the preset value. So the output for the countdown counter behaves the exact same as for the count up counter. It's just that the input pulse decrements the count value. count up down counter has inputs for incrementing and decrementing the count value. And an example, and again the output is true whenever the count value is equal to or greater than the preset value. And an example of when this could be used would be is if a manufacturer likes to keep a buffer of accumulated parts for processing then you'd have a sensor at the entrance and one at the exit of the accumulator. The sensor at the entrance would be tied, would be connected to the count up input for the counter, and the sensor at the exit of the accumulator would be connected to the count down input for the counter. And in that way, the system could keep track of how many parts are in the buffer for processing.